Regeneration X, the 90s. We are back. It is January 1993. My name is Daniel. I am joined by Cass and Wesley. We are checking out video games in 1993. Starting out with a little Game Boy action box adventure. Um, what we're seeing here is a lot of holiday and post-holiday releases. So most of the big name hits are going to come out. Um, in December, but a lot of people are getting consoles for Christmas, so January is not necessarily a dry month in the world of video games. Bonk originally on the TurboGrafx-16, and I guess some relationship with NEC allows this game to, to port over. Kind of a fun one, Mario-style game. I was never good at this one or Donkey Kong. A Donkey Kong I'm pretty okay at. I'm no Billy Mitchell, but okay. <laughs> right on. Mega Man 5 on the NES. You guys ever play any Mega Mans? If, you know, your frustration from any Mega Man can translate over to the other, so. Yeah, Absolutely. I tried I tried playing Mega Man. <laughs> tried. Mega Man's really. a cool game. It is a cool game, but it will test your patience for sure. In which case, I'm usually pretty good at the patience thing. I enjoyed it. I'm surprised I haven't played more Mega Man games than I did. I'm not like opposed to the, hey, get to a point and this really didn't work out the way that I thought that it should have. Now I will kind of beat my head against the wall a little too much, which is not the right personality for this game. There should be like some quick assessing and realizing that you don't have the proper weaponry to really beat the world, which is... Apparently, if you're skilled After enough, battle. you can start anywhere, but there are definitely ways that you can make things easier on yourself. Right. Mega Man 2 is the only one that I somehow persevered my way through and actually beat, and if I were to go back and try it today, I would probably never, never make it through a single stage. See, I just rented these, so I didn't... I had it for what three days tops. Oh, would it, I mean, I'm sure some people could do it, but it would it would definitely took me more than three days to beat Mega Man Two. Right. A lot of memorization and a and a decent amount of luck go into it because the respawning enemies mean that if you ever take a step backwards too far, then oh look they're back and now you're getting That's shot right. from the other side. That's right. Yep. That's a thing. Another month, another Simpsons game. Bart Man meets Radioactive Man on the NES. We just can't get enough Simpsons video games. I'm going to say I can and did. I don't think I... I, I think it would be improbable that I never played any of these. But I definitely wasn't seeking many of them out. I probably rented one out of the whole bunch. I know I, I went remember. through a phase where I would rent them, but I missed the vast majority of these games. The Yeah, I ignored the vast majority. I didn't really get into the Simpsons games until Hit and Run came out on the GameCube. Oh, no, Hit and Run is a story for another time, but it is an excellent game. Excellent. I don't remember this at all. It is a basically a Grand Theft Auto that is the Simpsons and takes place in the Simpsons world and it's okay. really fun yeah it's just a fun little goofy game yep just drive around and explore the, the world and do some missions if you feel like it but just the exploration of it is really cool um, we had a James Bond Jr. Uh, sighting a couple months ago so I thought why not include the young Indiana Jones in the mix I think this was also a television show, wasn't it? I was going to say, yep, that was a TV show. And also, looks like they took the game engine from Russian Attack or Rambo and did their magic again. Hey, we've yeah. already got we've got everything you need. All we need is an IP. All we need is a, a property to slap on this. The game's already made. Look, he's doesn't he look like a young Indiana Jones enough for you? That is clearly Indiana Jones. Clearly. <laughs> Fighting against... Some Nazi. God on the knows tank. what. Right. <laughs> Bomb and stuff. Because that's what Indiana Jones do. Just gotta engineer a couple cutscenes. 
And there you go. There you have it. The end. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Sega Genesis. Road Rash. Great game. Yeah, it is a super fun game. Different than a lot of stuff that you'd seen before. It's pretty addictive. Uh, the combat of, of getting up beside your opponents and kicking them off their bike. Punch, punch, punch. Fun stuff. EA would use this game engine to make a, a skateboard game. They made a probably the early foundation for Need for Speed with this. Uh, this was this was a game from EA that included vehicles in motion. But Road Rash itself very fun. Spawned some sequels, all performed about the same way. Good stuff. Yep, yep, I enjoyed them. Nice series. Sega Genesis also gets Turtles game based on all the arcade success. This is Hyperstone Heist for the Sega Genesis. Nah. Can't I, say that I did. They were uh, all playable. You know, all they were all equally enjoyable. You know what I mean? Like, did you like Ninja Turtles? Do you enjoy Love playing beat em ups? Then there you go. Sure. I'm with you there. Can't remember a Ninja Turtles game that I didn't like. Right, but don't all, remember this one. Also, Maybe I do actually. Also, though, if I were to show you this and tell you to name that Turtles game, you might have a hard time doing it because they were all essentially same the same. Yeah, not you know just more of the same for better or worse. Sure, it looks fine. If it ain't broke, probably gonna fight yeah. some. Same. Yep, there, there he is. Time with more Good graphics. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that too. Good looking Genesis game. Shredder has many, uh, many shreds on him. Right. Many blades. Little nod as the Sega CD games are starting to trickle out now. We have Cobra Command on the Sega CD. Check out these graphic effects. This is what you get with CDs. Visual. Uh, excitement. Does Nintendo have a CD? No. Nintendo don't have a CD. <laughs> Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Just fly around, aim at stuff. Cool. Yep. I'll try not cool. to gush over it cool. too much. Yep. Shoot helicopters. That's what this game's about. Also, now this game got perfect review scores from GamePro. This is a Sega CD game as well. It is called... Wonder Dog. Oh, that is a giant is dog. That? Wesley, that is a dog bone. What is that? That is a dog that bone. That is not a dog bone, Daniel. That is not a dog bone. You that know is it. a dog bone, and you know it. Dog bone that hosts this dog. Mm -hmm. What is the story of this game? Well, I'm letting it unfold right before your very eyes, and then I'll show you a little bit of the gameplay. This is the boy finds the dog. In a, in a mm -hmm. dog bone shaped spaceship, uh, wanders to the middle of nowhere with him to throw mm -hmm. sticks, apparently. Sure. And uh, I guess the dog leaves him and never comes back. Mm. That's depressing. Oh, no, the dog knocked the whole tree down because he's super strong. Anyway, at some point. Why is the dog looking like that? Dog. He just buried his bone. Oh, okay, here it comes. Here, here, this is the key plot twist. Do not bury your bone. The kid's dad's like, nah, man. You cannot have this dog. <laughs> but I want to be with the human. Yes. So, um, yeah. For whatever reason, now he's got to go do Wonder Dog things. And that, and that leads us to our gameplay. Wait, what? What's the dog's name? Wonder Dog. So the dog gets left by itself and all of a sudden unexplained gets magic? Becomes a cheerleader? Is the dog a cheerleader? Look, so, okay, so yeah, he, he thinks that he's going to get in the car with him. So here he is. He's moping away. We'll just, let's just, let's just see this thing through to, to see the premise here. Oh, he, no, I've got an idea. I have an idea. I got an idea. What if I go back to my dog bone-shaped spaceship? Daniel. 
not quite put my hand up to the uh, thing the right way, but still get in. All right. I have a spaceship that looks like it's from Halo, yet is only the size of a dog bone on the outside. Mm -hmm. And dress no, kind of like Mickey Mouse deep. and kind of like Mario. And put some... What in the world? Yeah. What oh, is Sonic that? shoes? The golden star. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just a little bit of everything here. And now, now do you understand the premise of the game? <laughs> nope. It's so clear to me now. Yeah, because I think I feel like I skipped it, and then you didn't understand, so I had to go back and show you, so you would understand. So the only thing I'm really questioning. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> is. How is it that the Sega CD failed? I don't... I'm asked that all the time to myself. <laughs> With stellar games like Wonder Dog. And this was the perfect game? It got... And this was a Sega now, CD? Yeah, it is a Sega CD game. It got straight 5 out of 5s in all categories from GamePro. I'm not making that up to just to... Because I love the Sega CD so much. Yeah, whatever. That's... Yeah, this... Um, I report the facts. Yeah, so I don't want to ruin the ending. What so what are you doing? What is the point in this dog? Well, you know I, I don't know that he ever even Game sees. Game Pro, you're a joke. <laughs> but you know, whatever. It's had some Mario elements in there. It's a pretty game. Yeah, played quickly. You gotta play. You gotta judge it through the lens of time. Wing yeah, command like birds. <laughs> all, he doesn't really like all all animals, uh, apparently. This, Turn into a tornado. That is a, a a space controller, Wesley, just before this even starts with you, okay? That is, he's controlling his... I was not going in. Okay. Oh, you Draco. But I can't unsee <laughs> it now. Why is this a game? This is Wing Commander on the Super Nintendo. This was a hit it's like on he's the, got a little bullseye. Hit target. on the PC. <laughs> and yeah. uh totally aiming his shots. Ported over with Hank Hill from good the Hill fame. Good one. We sell propane and propane accessories and we must deliver these. Underrated show, bless you, Jennifer. Bless you, Jennifer. I think that was Melissa. Oh. Yeah. Bless you, Melissa. Bless you, Melissa. Bless you, Melissa. I Rub was going to say, what a sweet, cute sneeze. <laughs> nah, you can still say it. <laughs> <laughs> what a sweet, cute sneeze. Melissa, not Jennifer. I guess that was the part I was going to leave out. Robocop 3. This one looks like Robocop. Yeah. It does. He looks like he moves about like a RoboCop would too. Minimal, minimal right arm movement. Uh, He's where a do we lefty. Stand on RoboCop as as why was this rated R movie continuously put into like cartoons and video games? Beyond for me. sure. What a good call. Um, because it really wasn't rated R, was it? I think it was. I don't. I don't know. I think it's one of those fake rated R's. Maybe so. Yeah, I think it would probably catch a PG thirteen in current right. times for sure. But I don't yeah, remember. Shot a lot of people. There was a lot of. Uh, you know what I mean. A lot of murder. A lot of. A lot of deaths. Like, Plus oh, the scary. Seventy five people died due to gun violence. So creepiest, now it's rated R. Creepiest part of RoboCops when he takes off his helmet. Agreed. I was like, I don't want to see this movie anymore. Just skip that part, and everything's fine. I'm pretty sure wasn't it played on TV like a little later, like. Yeah, I'm sure, right? Like, your the TBSs of the world would have carried this. There you have it, RoboCop on the Super Nintendo. Uh, Dragon's Lair, which uh, the game where you featured in in Stranger Things season two as a matter of fact. Uh but this is not that Dragon Slayer. This is just a quick nod to that. They took that game that was so popular in the arcade and made a side scroller out of it with Dirk just 
slashing away. You don't have to have any skills with the button press timing. You just have to be able to throw things at lizards. That's fun. Sometimes. <laughs> Overly cartoony, isn't it? Very much so. Here we have Bub Z, which is still around to this day in some form and has a reputation of being absolutely terrible in each iteration. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. This game had been hyped for a whole year before coming out on the Super Nintendo and just ended up not being very good at all. But his, he had a launch title or near launch title on the PlayStation 1 that is uh, famously horrible. It feels like every month there's another basketball game coming out, which is not not a bad thing by any means. But here we have Bulls Blazers. I think we had what? Did we have Bulls Lakers? No. Yep. Maybe it was Bulls Lakers last year. This is Bulls Blazers. You will not probably not notice any visual difference, but that was okay. Right. Because it was it had new rosters. And that's all we cared about. This is Kinda, the one I definitely. Owned. I'm not sure that I own Bulls Lakers, but I own Bulls versus Blazers. I think so. I think that's true for me as well. Love, love, love these games, though. Absolutely love them. Would I still love it today? I don't know, but but yeah, just so you said many. Said before, it looks like modern day basketball, just with worse graphics. Yeah, yeah, like tons of animations. I mean, these guys are just having a dunk fest on each other right now, but um. You know, like you, like there's Michael Jordan, there's Scottie Pippen, there's Horace Grant. You know, like you see them and like, oh, there, there they are. And that was pretty awesome. My God, I got into a little YouTube comments argument with a ch last week about this team. Coincidentally, it was based on a video of B.J. Armstrong My saying. God right saying that michael jordan he wish he had recordings of michael jordan in practice because i saw that same video okay because you really didn't see him at his best in the games because the games are somewhat restrictive and in practice he can really practice right he can mm. be an artist if you will Pretty you know cool. what i mean just do some stuff that you wouldn't normally do for the sake of competition, you know what I mean? So the best Jordan was in practice. So I end up with this argument where in the comments section, so, okay, so BJ says all that stuff and the girl interviewing him was asked the question, well, why didn't all this work that he put in in, in practice translate to, I forget how she said it, but she said it in a way that made the comment section blow up with she's an idiot questions. Where she was basically saying, why didn't we see his best in the games? And he did a good job of articulating that, which is kind of what I just said. Um, but I ended up in this argument where I was like, guys, it really wasn't a bad question, her asking why we didn't see Jordan's best as fans, why we never got to see it, but his teammates and the staff of the Bulls got to see it. You know what I mean? So coincidentally, I was just talking about this team. Uh, that first three-peat Bulls team was great. Shout out to BJ Armstrong and then and if you can catch that that series, because he did a series of interviews a while back and that was a part of it. Um but shout out to that team. Great team. Absolutely. You know, related, I read the book, uh I think it's called Relentless by Tim Grover, who was the personal trainer for Michael Jordan and then later on Kobe Bryant. And like if I can totally believe what you're saying about his him in practice because he talks about the drive that those two had and and how tough like they were hard teammates but in a good way like they they did not take it easy in practice at any point you were always getting their best right 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 and kobe will always kind of have to deal with the question of was he doing a jordan impersonation impersonation through everything that's a, such a weird thing with him. 
Well, he did still a lot of Jordan's moves. I mean, he did well, absolutely, but model, all of us to, did at that time. Right to like to model yourself after somebody who was proven to be the best. Is that a bad exactly. thing? Is that a bad thing? You're exactly right, Daniel. Is that a bad thing? Like even even, even to go get Jordan's trainer in Tim Grover's. Like, well, this guy was the best. His trainer was the best. I need the best. Why would I, I not go it. get him? Yeah, I there's a reality where it's like, okay, so tell me about Jordan. What did he do? Well, in practice. He went hard all the time, right? All the time, competitive about everything. It's like, okay, well, I guess I need to be competitive about everything and work really hard. And you got to respect that about Kobe, even oh, if it is, yeah, like you say, even, yeah, even if it is an impersonation, you got to respect it. Yeah, his work ethic, Kobe, that is, uh, and Jordan too, but just second to none. Sabaneta on the Super Nintendo. Certainly not a Terminator knockoff at all. Could you play as a, a mech? Okay. Well-reviewed. Well quick quick shot. Yeah. Well-reviewed game. Graphics are good. Yeah, it looks good. The big release on Super Nintendo this month, though, was Mario Paint. I don't know if you guys, being Sega guys, remember this one at all. Came with a mouse. Plugged in. I remember it was a thing. I spent a lot of time on this, actually. I actually loved this. You could draw things and animate them. It's not really... You can make your own music, as you can kind of see there. Um, and yes, those were cat and pig sounds as he's going going down there. But uh, the most fun part was you could make these stamps and you had like nine frames of animation. So you could kind of make what you see there. And... And show it to absolutely no one because it's not like you could save it or unless you hooked it up to a VCR or something. And closing out the month, we got a few arcade games. This is Bucky O'Hare in in arcades, kind of a side-scrolling shooter. But I thought this one, uh, I don't remember it. The name sounds familiar, but it definitely had a really fun visual style. Yeah, it looks good. Name sounds familiar for sure. And this one I do remember, Virtua Racing. This mm, was, not. yeah, this was going to be a big deal. Um, it's from Sega, and just one of the early 3D racers, as you can see, like what they were doing with 3D polygons and that kind of thing, really led the way. This, and then what would uh, a similar, you know, assets and engine would make Virtua Fighter, which was really going to do a lot for the 3D fighting games is gonna as we were so stuck in Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter Virtual Fighter is gonna come around and, and say hey we can actually do this on a in the three dimensions and more than a left and right kind of thing so but this racing game was what kicked all that off and you guys probably remember um, Battletoads that's the big arcade game of the month of course not the turtles not the turtles like right exactly some people love them and there's some people like me who they're like yeah, is this just not the ninja turtles is that what we're... <laughs> who loves them weirdos they, yeah i mean contrarians. I don't... right contrarians there you go some people who just needed uh to be contrary and, and like something yeah. well i prefer battletoads to ninja turtles <laughs> do you yeah. do you jacko 